Hello, hello, welcome back to a brand new reading vlog. For those of you who are new, hello, my name is Jess. It is Monday morning and I'm currently sipping on some rather cold coffee at this point. And that's because I have another drink. I have a cold beverage that I've been drinking. This is called Morir Soñado, which is to die dreaming in English. This is a, like a Dominican brunch breakfast specialty drink. And I have been drinking it every single day. This one has evaporated milk, orange juice, and sugar. I use brown sugar, but if you want to try it, I highly advise you to use sweetened condensed milk. Mix it with like another milky beverage of your choice. I prefer Oatly. Mix it just a little bit, put some um, cubes or like ice cubes, and then pour your orange juice. That's like the key is to pour your orange juice after you've done everything else. And I think it tastes like five times better than evaporated, but this is what I have on hand. So anyways, I have just been kind of going through emails at this point, but I wanted to kind of open this vlog a little bit earlier instead of waiting until after work time. Ow, I just hit my, my toe. Uh, just because we have a lot to discuss. So it has been a couple of days since I last spoke to you guys and I have three books on, well, okay, one of them I just finished, which I was supposed to read it during this vlog, but I got way too ahead of myself and then I have two books that we're going to talk about. So first thing, Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Menezella. This is the book that I finished. Um, I was supposed to, like I said, wait until I did this vlog, but I couldn't. I was so close to the end, you guys, and I, to be quite honest, I'm going to rate this a three. It wasn't the best. I thought this was going to be kind of like Dale for aunties, just really funny, very like exaggerating. Um, the plot line and it really just wasn't at I'm not gonna lie at, at quite some time or in the middle for some time it was very boring very very boring we just yeah I just felt like it could have um, been a little bit shorter and then I think the book would have been like a four or five star for me but if you don't know what this is we follow Lila Macapagal and her auntie so she is back at home because her tita rosie's restaurant is just a failing business at this point they're losing a lot of money and so lila is taking it upon herself to kind of look at the financials and figure out where they stand however one day a bad food critic he's just evil man this evil evil man who turns out to be her ex comes in with his dad and they're trying all the foods because he's going to write a bad food critique they just automatically know it He's a really rude guy, doesn't even leave tips, and Lila and him are kind of having like a back and forth moment at this point, and then out of nowhere, he's struggling to breathe, he goes on the floor, and they have to call the ambulance, and then he's basically taken to the hospital, and unfortunately he passes away, and they're like, oh my gosh, like maybe, he, you know, he was a diabetic, maybe he ate something that he shouldn't have, and maybe he wasn't watching his sugar, and then it turns out he's been poisoned and the police do an investigation on the restaurant and they're finding arsenic and a bunch of other stuff in their rice and it's so crazy and Lila's just kind of dumbfounded. Honestly, her whole family is dumbfounded because they're like, we would never do such a thing, especially to someone who's constantly just rating us like really bad reviews and we're just, you know, we're just not like that. And of course the police department are like, well, y'all were kind of the only people like around when he passed away and his dad who was there claims that y'all did this mess and there's just like basically a can of worms that was opened so this entire book lila is just investigating because she wants to clear her family's name especially her because the police are just like eyeing her as the main culprit with a lot of motive and so she puts on her detective hat and she starts kind of interviewing other restaurants that he's just left really bad critiques basically people who would have it out against him would have a motive and so this whole book she's just interviewing a lot of people but then we also get to see other people who she's really close with such as her best friend adina adina's uh, um boss named kevin who kind of runs like a coffee bakery shop right next door and we just get to encounter a lot of her family so it's just that part was really nice i really liked all of the family parts especially her aunties Honestly, if it wasn't for her aunties and their personalities, this book would just be so, so boring. It, the middle part was already boring to me, but I feel like it would have just been like a two or a one rating if they weren't in it, if I'm being really honest with you guys. But so yeah, so basically she's just going undercover and 
I have to admit, the beginning of this book, I loved. It pulled me in. It was just like Dali for aunties. We had a lot of witty banter. We have a very stubborn but proud main character. And then I loved the ending because all of the answers, you know, basically the puzzle was being put together. We had a lot of aha moments. And I really found that quite stunning, which is why I didn't film the ending. Or like, I just didn't film at all with this because it just happened so quickly. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I just finished the book. And I have to talk about it and yeah I just wasn't expecting it but I'm gonna rate this a three really wasn't the best I don't know if Mia has like any other books out it does say that this is Atika Rosie's kitchen mystery so I'm assuming she's gonna be writing more or there's already in the series but I don't know I'm just very hesitant to pick them up just because I didn't have a great time with this so for now I'm just gonna put that down and yeah we're gonna talk about other books up next we have rich people problems this is the third installment to crazy rich Asians this is by Kevin Kwan I am actually listening to this on audio, but I do have a physical hardback to or paperback to show you. I am 20% into the audiobook. I don't know where that places me actually in the paperback, but it's so freaking good. It is so funny. This is by far, I would say, I don't know, if I had to rate them, I think the second one in the book uh, or the series China Rich Girlfriend is actually my least favorite compared to the first one. Definitely the third one. This one is like just starting off it with a huge bang and I think yeah I'm three hours into this so if you don't know what this is we follow obviously Nicholas Young the Youngs the Shangs and Nicholas's grandmother Suli who if you haven't read the book but you watched the movie you did see her she is the grandmother to Nicholas she is just a very stubborn fierce overall badass like 96 97 year old at, at this point she has a heart attack and she's on her deathbed and basically what that means so the shang slash young family clan so like everyone that's related to her has overheard that she is on her deathbed and they are like to the moon because they think that they might have an in into her will now she is notorious for writing in and writing out people just like if they piss her off she writes them out of the will and the thing with this will is that you have tiresel house which is like her big mansion in singapore it's like the largest property in singapore and there's like a bunch of other things obviously billions of dollars and probably investments who knows but basically everyone wants a stake into this will and so they're all kind of being like buddy buddy with her and we haven't got into that part yet which i think it's gonna be quite hilarious like seeing all these people kind of butter her up but we are at the point where everyone has kind of overheard that Sui's on her deathbed. People are freaking out. I know Nicholas Young, he's on his way to Singapore. We've seen Eleanor, we even see Kitty, and I freaking love Kitty. We kind of got like a, I would say an introduction or a new introduction to her current lifestyle. She has just been like climbing the ranks and although her character is very vulgar i would say like i just root for her consistently because she is so funny and and over dramatic like she's the most dramatic character out of them all so we have been seeing them and of course we see the lovely astrid and she has a very public drama thing happening right now and i just cannot believe it and yeah i just oh man i just cannot rave enough about this book i'm probably gonna try my best not to spoil this book in case you haven't read the first one the second one you just i don't know haven't even watched the movie i'm gonna try not to spoil it as best as i can so i'm gonna be very vague when talking about this book but just oh just man promise me that you're gonna start this book promise me you're gonna start this trilogy it is just so good it's so freaking good and i'm so happy that i have the audio version to listen to because it is quite phenomenal and it's kind of saddening because i don't really want to finish this series but it's probably gonna happen quite soon especially at the rate that i'm going with listening to the audiobook i plan two hours today but who knows depending on how much i can clean and tidy it might be four or five hours it really just depends the last book that i want to talk to you guys about is if i disappear by eliza jane brazier i just started this novel um, i'm only maybe 30 or so pages and so in this book 
let's just like look take a moment for the cover because it's quite beautiful honestly this is what like gravitated me to this book in the first place when i first saw it it's just creepy but at the same time like very beautiful like creepily beautiful yeah i don't know like something about the way there's stripes into the face just really creeps me out and this is a mystery thriller so we follow the main character named sarah now sarah is absolutely obsessed and when i mean obsessed like i'm talking about super super obsessed with this true crime podcast podcast that's hosted by a lady named rachel now you know just like with any true crime podcast you know she just dives into stories about missing person cases and sarah's enamored with all these cases to the point where we're starting to get to know her as a person and it seems like when she becomes obsessed with something she drops everything else in her life so she quit her job or she didn't quit she lost her job because she didn't go in because she just wanted to listen to the podcast she is very lazy in other aspects in her life and all she wants to do is just listen to this podcast and so basically we just find out right she's just super obsessed and then there's a point where she's expecting another episode but no episode comes right and she's like okay that's kind of weird maybe like rachel's taking a break and then the next week occurs and nothing and then the next week nothing and so she's like wait maybe rachel disappeared maybe when she's you know kind of doing research for these episodes maybe she ran into someone that wasn't necessarily a nice person and maybe she's like trapped and maybe she's you know taken hostage or she's a prisoner and i'm gonna take it upon myself to investigate and i'm gonna put on my rachel detective hat and be just like her and then find her and then she's gonna love me and yeah that's just how she thinks right and so it's just overall batshit crazy however there is something definitely off like it's weird that rachel hasn't been on her podcast for quite some time and it's not just that uh sarah does notice that her entire just social media life has gone stagnant when usually she's a very popular very active on all types of social media such as instagram facebook etc etc and so that is kind of weird that for the past like however many weeks she's been just basically dead to her social media presence so yeah well, definitely something is brewing something crazy has happened rachel man she basically aired it out like where she grew up where she was raised in some place called like well it's it's near happy camp california and she was raised on a ranch with her parents and so sarah's like oh i'm gonna go there i'm going to interview people around there and i'm gonna find her i'm gonna find sarah and so she goes and she ends up in happy camp because she kind of got lost no cell service it's in the mountains you guys and she goes to this like coffee restaurant-esque place and this is kind of where you get to know more about sarah's personality to where she's just like thinking like it feels like 1500 miles per hour and she's constantly thinking of conversations in the future and how she would respond how she would react so she goes there right and she's like oh maybe i should re ask for directions but i don't want to like let people know that i'm on the trail and so i'm really not going to ask for directions but i'm going to just pretend that i'm in the area that i heard about this ranch like on social media and that there's horseback riding and i want to go and so she talks to the waitress and she's like hey i heard about a ranch that has like horseback riding and that sounds so cool like can you pinpoint me like it says that it's like nearby and the waitress is like oh we don't have that like you would have to go like three hours out to the next town like eureka is what it's called and inside sarah head she's like mm, she's lying maybe she's a suspect i don't really like this waitress like she's coming off weird like the vibes are just iffy and maybe she has a vendetta against rachel like who knows and so she keeps like kind of like jabbing the lady with like oh are you sure like i heard about this place and it's like a very vacation-esque place and are you sure like i said it's like near happy camp and the lady's like no we don't have anything like that so yeah skedaddle and so sarah's like you know what i'm just gonna find this place by myself so she goes and she obviously finds the ranch we meet rachel's mother who's this like hard ass like literally something is off about her i don't know what but there's gonna be something and the ranch is not the picturesque ranch that you see on social media it's very run down and what's weird is that sarah's like oh i'm looking for work i heard you had work and the girl was like or the mom was like well where did you hear this she's like oh just from abouts and i you know i'm very capable and without a resume without interviewing without anything the lady's like okay come with me i'm gonna show you the ranch which that's a red flag and then they show her to her like living quarters that's a huge red flag it is so disgusting she smells rat crap or rat feces um there's so much dust 
things are not working the stove doesn't work or like the heater fireplace doesn't work just it's just creepy you guys so creepy and so that's where i am i know that was kind of long-winded but i'm ugh, man i just i don't know what it is about mystery thriller it just gets to me and so that's where i am and if i disappear i do have a goal to read at least two hours of this today so i'll probably read that in the evening time but that my guys is basically everything that i am going to be doing today hello welcome okay it is about to be 1 p.m which means it's my lunch break i've only just been working i am basically just talking to you while standing up because i'm trying to stretch i was just in a really hunched position while working like i was like this or at least i felt like this like that is just so bad for your back and just like overall health and demeanor and so i'm just taking this time oh my gosh did y'all hear that <laughs> i'm just taking this time to kind of stretch out my limbs but i wanted to show you as well my little outfit that i have on today so these are actually shorts can you see yes these are actually shorts so i went to tj maxx yesterday i did a whole shopping spree i got so many pieces you guys i got like eight or nine different types of um outfits i got a dress most of it i just got tops and then this was actually a set so this is 94 percent polyester very comfy it feels like i'm wearing a blanket i have some shorts that have a little bow on the front and then this is just a long gray sweater and i don't know the brand but this was in the women's section this is a small and then on my feet i have what is this ray dunn pink slippers they're so fuzzy and then on the inside they say be and then kind this is the look for today's cozy vibes for now i'm actually gonna go downstairs i have to do i need to put up my laundry for sure for sure and then start some sheets in the washer i did start my dishwasher so that's good to go for today and then i'm gonna drink some pre-workout get into like a little treadmill get up and start listening to crazy rich asians the trilogy yeah i just wanted to do a little update for you guys oh my gosh i just <laughs> i'm looking at myself in the viewfinder and i'm just loving this sweater so so much i love the color gray i love ugh, it just like makes my heart happy anyways i'm gonna go downstairs with you guys we're gonna put up some laundry well actually i just need to fold do all that stuff and then get pre-workout in our system so we can be healthy <laughs> She hangs with that foreign billionaire crowd. It's only fitting. I can take She's this. I'm sure you're a good With everyone in town, I can watch you stop securing up non-stop. No problem. Time is Coming right up. I'm just going to visualize a hundred sticks of sake awaiting me there. You know, not to push it is 7 13 p.m you guys i got my eyebrows done i don't know if y'all can tell my eyebrow stylist just really does my eyebrows so well i only trust her and i just feel like a brand new person like a brand new individual and i'm so excited that this is just basically one thing that is done before my birthday i also made some chicken nuggets i know this is kind of weird that i'm only eating them by themselves but I'm basically like in the mood to just like nitpick in my pantry and fridge and just like gorge on anything that I want to. So quite honestly, I'm thinking of making green beans after this and just eating green beans or like some fruit. I really don't know. Don't judge me. I'm just like one of those people sometimes where I focus on just one food at one time and then I just like go down an assembly line. It's so weird. But yeah. I'm going to eat this and kind of just watch something on YouTube. I'm kind of in the middle, actually, of Books and Lala, still reading the lowest rated books. I had to pause my journey with this while working and stuff like that. So now I'm able to pick it back up. But before I do that, I do have a reading update. So I have been reading Rich People Problems pretty much for a long time, like three hours worth. Pretty much I read during my treadmill workout an hour and I've been doing about two hours of just continuous audio so I'm six hours and five minutes in I still have a little under 10 hours left to go so I'm 38% done 
and the book is just going by so quickly but like uh i can't believe this is the last installment like i know we have sex and vanity by kevin kwan which is kind of in the same world i just want more like in-depth depictions of some of our characters such as kitty we got to see a little bit of oliver which if we don't like if you don't know who oliver is he's just like an absolute doll he's a gem he's an antiquities dealer and basically he can get anything that the aunties ever desire and he's just really comical and like just oh my god i just love him so we got to see him with kitty my other fave person and she basically remodeled her house and so she's showcasing it to a lot of people in society just to kind of make a name for herself because kitty has had like a struggling background in order to get where she is now and she's just basically trying to leave the past in the past and showcase herself as this like new individual with billions of dollars basically behind her name so we got to see kitty um there are some developments in regards to sue lee so she's having i don't know if they're visions slash memories i think they're mostly like a made up of like a dream with a memory coming through if that makes sense and i'm not really understanding what's going on i like as a reader i, I think at this point we're still kind of like trying to figure out what's happening but basically she's having these dreams and inside these dreams are like depictions or memories of her past life. So it seems like she at one point didn't live in Singapore. Her father actually during like a revolution of some sort forced her to flee out of the country and then she came back. So we got to see a glimpse of that part of her life. And then we're getting more of a glimpse of her brother who seems like she was very fond of and, and died like a long time ago. So there's something to do with that and i'm really curious as to why we're bringing up her past and what this will mean when it comes to her will and yeah just like overall relationships in general in the present day so that's happening we are getting a lot of developments in regards to astrid and her like very public drama and i feel like at this point like for her like i'm like overjoyed with what's been going on but of course her family isn't and so we just get to see a lot of hatred coming from these aunties and they're just so flabbergasted that like astrid out of all individuals in the family is in the lime right lime light right now and then of course we have eddie who i hate eddie he is one of the cousins slash brothers to nick young and i hate him he is definitely an egotistical narcissist type of person like he is that one person that would do anything like any means necessary to get to the top and win whether it's cheating throwing his friends or family under the bus like he's just that individual and he's done it so many times already we're not even like halfway through the book i feel and he's just thrown so many people under the bus to make sure that his name is in the will particularly to get Tyresol Park because apparently what people are saying is that this house is worth so much money that if you sell it I mean you're just like your new fate is sealed like you're gonna be one of the richest people if not already and it will just set the tone for who's kind of at the top of the hierarchy when it comes to the family so that's kind of where I am I don't want to say too much like I said in the beginning because this is the third book of the series I really don't want to give any spoilers but just know I'm having a thrill of a ride with this book it just makes me so happy the fact that I've already read six hours worth or listened to six hours worth of the audio and I have like nine hours left I just have a feeling that if I continue well, I'm probably gonna not yeah, I'm probably not going to continue it tonight because I do want to read If I Disappear. I have yet to touch this at all today. So my goal is to finish eating. And then I think, I can't remember who, but one of my people that I'm like sub to did a reading sprint yesterday. And I'm the type of person, like I personally don't mind watching sprints that have already occurred so they're not technically live just to kind of get in the spirit and the flow so i might put on a reading sprint for this and just do like two hours worth we'll see i'm trying to get to bed by 10 p.m so i definitely think i have two hours in me to do this and eat at the same time but we'll see but yeah i just wanted to update you where i am with rich people problems and yeah Okay, we 
have a little reading update. I have been doing a reading sprint. We just finished our 30 minutes. This is Jess Owens. I didn't even realize she posted or she hosted a live reading sprint with Angela. I've never met Angela before, but I did subscribe to her. She looks really cool. And yeah, subscribe to her channel, but we did 30 minutes and it got me to page 55. So I do have a little bit of a reading update for you guys. So at this point, ah man, I am very intrigued by how this book is turning out, but there are some things that I'm kind of concerned about in regards to moving the plot. So at this point, Sarah has just been getting to know the ranch and it's really concerning. The ranch is very spooky. It's in a state of disarray, which is kind of alarming. I'm kind of filing that in the back of my mind just because the ranch is just worn down. There's rat feces everywhere. There's thick layers of dust. A lot of things don't work. No electricity, Wi-Fi apparently isn't happening for another six weeks. Apparently it's six weeks until the first guests arrive for vacationing at this ranch. And it's just really alarming, really concerning. Like how can a ranch get to such a state in between popular vacation times? Now, in regards to workers, apparently there is a person named Jed who also is working on the property, but he's on vacation right now. So we haven't met anyone actually other than the mom and the people that we met at that like coffee restaurant, which is kind of concerning because like I said, we're 55 pages in. This book isn't that big if I'm being honest. And it's just really alarming to me that we haven't been introduced to other characters. Apparently the mom has a husband who's currently in Ashland, which is like a town three hours away. And I believe I did mention this, that the mother doesn't like Happy Camp, which is literally the closest town to them because something happened, like she calls them a bunch of liars and stuff like that. And so they actually travel three hours away to purchase any supplies and food. And even Sarah, like she's basically been forbidden to go to Happy Camp. So anything she needs, needs to be from Ashland, which is quite crazy. Now, the only type of service at this ranch is a landline, which Sarah did use to call her ex-husband, which we found out that she was married, recently divorced, she had a miscarriage, and that was kind of the moment where she took a turn for the worse, unfortunately. And her as a character, so I, I do like her. She has such an obsessive way of thinking about things, especially when it comes to the podcast and Rachel, the host of the podcast. She's so obsessed with her, so obsessed with trying to figure out what happened to her. Like she's starting to create scenarios in her head, which I'm just like, okay, this is very intriguing. Like I really hope that these don't come to fruition, but I guess we'll definitely see hopefully what happened to Rachel or where where Rachel eventually ran off to. Um, yeah, I just, I really like our main character. She can be a little bit messy and a little bit jumbled, but I think it's the perfect description for the type of character that would definitely risk her life to work at a creepy ranch. So that's kind of where I am. Yeah, I'm just going to basically turn this back on. I did make a cup of tea, so I'm gonna be drinking this while we're kind of having this like intermittent break. I actually might fast forward it just to give me enough time to read, but I do love seeing um, what people were talking about and pretending that this is like actually live. I just find these really enjoyable, just, you know, listening to them and like watching like the chat and yeah, it's just really fun. So I'm going to sip some of my tea, read maybe a little bit of what's been going on like the chat and stuff like that and then i'll get back to reading and then i will update you right before bedtime the red tested baby and i mean i, I had a couple little things but I, yeah i mean every uh, i don't know it's so funny because it depends Okay, I finished reading a hundred pages of if i disappear and i do have some thoughts i just finished the reading sprint um, by Jess and it's been really helpful to focus and to have like motivation. It's just really great. I love reading sprints so, so much. But so little update for you guys. So I, it's kind of funny 
and ironic that the last time I spoke to you I was like oh we haven't met anyone well we did we met the husband Emmett who is really weird laughs at the most like inopportune times and then we met Jed the head wrangler who also lives on the ranch and he's just a very angry curious individual we don't know too much about him other than that he's just having relationship issues with his current wife and there's something I, I don't know there's like a wedge in between him and his relationship with the mother and the father of the ranch and i don't know it's just weird getting bad vibes overall but we don't know too too much about him we just met him also we get to know more about rachel as a person between jed her parents there was also another person that visited the ranch he was a vet and we get little tidbits about who rachel was and it's not looking too good you guys i don't know and sarah is honestly a little taken aback from what she's heard because in her eyes which this is another character development i personally feel for sarah not only is sarah obsessive about the podcast in general and rachel but she's starting to talk in terms of like her and rachel are like best friends or close family members because for example she's like well she never told me this or she never said x and y and i don't believe that she would never say you know she would always tell me but like it's weird like this is a podcast rachel is speaking to you know numerous amount of people like it's not just you that she's talking to but the way sarah is talking it's like as if she personally has had conversations with this girl and i just don't think that's the case so definitely some character development we can definitely see that sarah is a individual who just has a lot of complex issues ptsd trauma that i think is just kind of slowly unraveling and just causing a lot of um difficult moments in her life and i just don't think that she should necessarily be in this predicament i feel like it's a very dangerous game that she's playing because we did uncover some stuff about rachel and her possible disappearance and it's just overall it's just not looking too good it seems very risky seems very dangerous so i really hope our main character can figure this out in a timely manner and i hope nothing happens to her because at this point we're 100 pages in and i don't feel like any negative consequences have occurred there hasn't really been a lot of plot development it's been a lot of character development at this point and a lot of world building or like ranch building because it's not even like a world to be honest right where i ended was the first time we came off of the reser or off of the ranch and that's kind of interesting because for several chapters up until now she's been like oh i'm going to go to happy camp i'm going to go to town i'm going to go in town i'm going to interview people i'm going to talk to people and it's 100 pages and she's just now leaving the ranch and i'm like okay this is this is interesting this is kind of weird this is kind of alarming as the plot develops i mean this book is only 200 and like 80 something pages i think no it's 293 pages so we don't really have that long to go i mean let's be real i'm halfway through this book we haven't really interviewed any of the town people which i feel like that's super critical but i guess like we're about to hit a part where we're going to be in town hopefully just talking to people it just i don't know this whole book seems fake like surreal like i don't know something's off the vibe is off which i guess could be a good thing because this is a like mystery suspense novel i'll give it that there's a lot of suspense with this book but one thing i do want to say is i'm really hoping when i pick this book up tomorrow that there is some plot development because although i do like the character development and the world building i feel like if we don't get a plot development sometime soon that's kind of astronomical i'm going to be quite bored or i'm going to get into that phase of boredom where it's going to be a hard trek to finish this book not that this book isn't great or not great i don't want to say great because it's not like spectacular spectacular but i i can just definitely see this book if it doesn't do something in the middle 
plot wise i'm going to be a little bored just putting that out there i'm just kind of forewarning you guys that that's kind of the vibe that i'm getting the feelings that i'm getting so far reading 100 pages i will see you tomorrow sleep tight hello it has been a few days since i last spoke to you guys i'm currently recouping from a very long birthday weekend that was so much fun but i am lacking energy and i pulled a muscle somewhere like in my armpit area and so this arm is just like in a lot of pain and i don't really know what to do other than just like kind of rest it and use my dominant hand um previously i didn't film any reading updates for you guys but i promise i did read as you guys know i read if i disappear by eliza jane brazier and then i finished rich people problems by kevin kwan this is book three in the crazy rich asians series now rated this a three rated this a two uh, not impressed but let's gonna yeah we're gonna start with rich people problems so i rated this a three primarily because the first half of half of the book i feel like could have been condensed we had this huge ordeal between sue Yi, the grandmother who's on her deathbed and nick young who we just know and love and there's just like a huge drama thing about Sue Yi not wanting to see him and not wanting to talk to him and that wasn't really the case and Nick's kind of just like eh, very meh about it until like the very ending and of course we got to see Kitty, we got to see Oliver but I feel like their stories were kind of squashed instantaneously in the beginning. They were so boring that my love for Kitty was, I mean I loved Kitty as a character but I felt like she didn't get enough limelight compared to the second book and I was really hoping that we got to see her a lot in this book which we technically did in the second half but in the first part i was just like so bored so bored with the drama between suyi nick and then eddie who is nick's cousin who's just a jackass he's just a jackass which i understand that that's his character and so what's funny or i guess really not funny because i rated it so well a three is that after the first half of the book, Suyi passes away, which we all we all know that that's happening. The drama between Suyi and Nick is over, and I'm like, what's gonna happen in the last portion of the book? I mean, we had so many pages left, and that was like the biggest drama that we focused on, and then we squashed it, and I'm like, what's happening next? And so, I have to admit, the second half of the book I actually loved, if the first half was at the same pace with the same action the same type of drama this would have been a four or five in my eyes and the second half of the book we deal with just a lot of craziness with like you know who's going to be more financial stable uh, yeah who's going to be more financially stable even though they're already all billionaires Who's going to have Tire Cell Park? Who's in the will? What's going to happen afterwards? Because Suyu was like the glue of the family. She was the matriarch of the family. What's going to happen to Nick and Rachel? What's going to happen to Eleanor? Like, you know, people that we know and love. And the second part was really good. And Kitty got more of the limelight because we got to see her character just literally throw temper tantrums, which I freaking loved. She's just so smart and Oliver was with her a lot in this book, which is understandable. I don't really, well, I didn't really care for Oliver's character in this book. He was more serious and sad, but he had his own drama for the most part, but he was helping Kitty basically, once again, like in book two, kind of make herself known to the world of billionaires. And she just did it so successfully. And she's in this like, weird brawl with her daughter-in-law colette who i don't even think colette realizes that her mother-in-law was so enamored and jealous of her and just wanted to be on the top like pretty much this was all like kitty and her mindset and what she was thinking but i honestly loved it so much because oops sorry guys i kicked the <laughs> the dusk um yeah we got to see her just dive into all of these crazy plans on spending money on just like crazy stuff so that she could be the best of the best and that colette would be nothing like she wanted to be royalty and have colette bow down to her and it was so fun to read i just love kitty so much i don't think a lot of people really like kitty but i do i think she's the best out of all the characters in this book even nick i thought nick was quite boring until literally like the last few chapters he was just being like such a baby and wasn't having it so yeah that was this book overall 
it's a three. If we didn't like have all of these freaking pages, it would have been a four or five. Condense it down. I think that was perfect. And then yeah, we can continue. Um, so that was the last of the Crazy Rich Asian series. So I have finished that entire series. Overall, I do recommend it if you want a good laugh, if you want a lot of drama, specifically family drama with billionaires and them spending money on just such lavish lifestyle items, this is definitely for you. Now, man, if I disappear, I had such high hopes, high, high hopes, but it's a two. I, going into this book, I was enamored. I was so intrigued by the synopsis of the book. You know, I love true crime podcasts and I thought that this was going to be something else entirely, like a fan looking for the host of a true crime podcast. Like I would love to do that with like, and that's why we drink or my favorite murder. Like imagine you're trying to find the host of one of those shows and like you're putting on your thinking cap and, and investigating and talking to people. That's why I picked up this book, obviously, and the cover. And the cover was, yeah, this made me gravitate towards it even more so. So that's what I'm kind of going in. This is gonna be so crazy, so suspenseful. We're gonna see a lot of different types of characters, both quirky, scary, creepy, very anxious type of people. I was ready for it, did not happen. It was so boring. After like the first 50 pages, I was bored. And the only reason I got through it was because I was able to get the podcast halfway through this book. And I feel like the person narrating saved it because at least she had more personality when reading the lines. And so I think that really helped it. We never really left the ranch. When we did, it was for stupid reasons. And then our character is so anxious at driving that she never really left, but she kept talking about it. And what's really weird is that the mink uh, mother, her name's Addie, and Emmett, the father, don't like Happy Camp. They hate the people, they think they're liars, yada, yada, yada. But yet they're hosting dinners, they're hosting get-togethers with the people from Happy Camp. Does that make sense to you? Because it doesn't to me. And so. Most of the characters that were investigated went to Addie's ranch by themselves. So Sarah never really got to do her own investigations. Everyone just kind of came to her. And I guess it makes sense because she is such a nervous and anxious character and she's trying to be like this big bad true crime podcast like person uh, personality and it just wasn't happening. And that was pretty much all the excitement that we got in the middle of the book was these people coming her kind of talking to them, her kind of not, because I feel like her investigation skills never went anywhere. It was just like information automatically given to her. And I was like, okay, I get it. But like still very boring. There were a lot of nasty staff cabins. The main building that hosted a gift shop was dirty. It was dusty. It was disgusting. Pretty much everything on this ranch wasn't working or it was broken, it was dirty, it had cobwebs on everything. And the only thing that didn't was Addie and Emmett's house. Apparently that was like a luxurious camping style house that was very cozy and warm because Sarah kept talking about that quite a lot throughout this entirety of the book. And I was like, okay, I mean, it makes sense. But at the same time, they're supposed to open in like a month or two. They only have two workers and yeah, it was just weird. Also, I feel like Eliza was trying to throw us a lot of red herrings, but she did so, so much, particularly with a couple of characters that I was like, okay, you're trying to make us go on this trail for these couple of characters so much so that now I don't believe that these characters um, are the murderer. And what's unfortunate, I wasn't even halfway into this book really when I discovered who the murderer was because it's basically handed to you guys. It's it's so obvious who the murderer is and I just had high hopes that I was wrong. I really was hoping that when I was towards the end of the book that there was gonna be a huge plot twist and it was going to be one of the characters that I least expected. That was not the case. There was kind of a plot twist, but I was like, this is false. This, is, this isn't working out for me. This doesn't make sense. We barely focused on this character. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. It just was boring and bland majority of the time. 
Sarah, mm, very anxious type of person. Um, I did like her character, like she wasn't overly annoying for me because I have to admit, sometimes in like thriller suspense novels when we have a main character that is going through a lot of struggles and they have depression, they have anxiety, it's really hard for me as a reader to read through. And she did, like Sarah did have some of those personality traits and struggles happening in her life, but she wasn't constantly talking about it and so therefore I was a bit okay with having kind of her POV and it was fine. Um, other than that, yeah, everything was just boring, everything was bland. I can't even in fact remember some of the characters' names, especially people who were from Happy Camp. Can't remember and honestly I don't really care. And as far as Jed, who was the only other rancher, he was like a horseman, like he was supposed to be the one riding the horses and like tiring them out and taking care of them and Addie didn't let him. I really don't know what his job was on the ranch except for drinking. Just drinking. He was a huge alcoholic, barely could talk, had a weird relationship with Sarah which I did not like. It was just like forced because they were, I guess you can consider it close proximity even though he was married because they were on the ranch and they were like pretty much the only two young couples and it was just bound to happen but I did not like it, I did not care for it and I don't think it really moved the plot other than making him seem like a very disgusting individual who just sleeps around a lot because it is known that he sleeps around with people in town and I'm like it's like five people in this town like let's let's be real like why why is this character existing and we kind of get to see it at the very ending but I'm just like I don't know I'm gonna stop talking about it clearly you can tell that this was a two for me and I don't recommend it so these were the books that I read now we can get on to the fun stuff hello this is editing Jess I just finished editing majority of this video and I realized I did not film an outro, so I am doing so now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give this a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I will have all of my other social medias linked down below. And as always, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>